Today we're going to talk about a US embassy, microwaves and a Russian secret weapon. At all times and in all places, we are eternally surrounded and penetrated by radiations of frequency, of different wavelengths, but they're forever changing, combining and opposing in their action. The big difference today is that those radiations are no longer the natural frequencies which enable this world to come into existence and develop over the last few billion years. By way of example, in 1962, security agents in the US Embassy in Moscow, while making an electronic sweep of the premises, a routine procedure since 1952, discovered that the building was being bombarded with microwave radiation. Initially, the US Department of Defense assumed it was to listen in to their communications, fair play in the Cold War era. That may have been the case, but the Russians were using multiple frequencies on broadly fluctuating and irregular wave bands, so it was not just eavesdropping, jamming, or detection. Any form of radiation affects humans, no matter the intensity, regularity, wavelength, temperature, or other factor. It will impact you. The problem is that no one knows how. Sorry, better change that. It would be more precise to say that if anyone does know, it is classified information, and if fed to us lesser mortals, it is in very limited doses. In 1967, the then US President Lyndon Johnson asked his Russian counterpart, Mr. Kuzigan, to stop irradiating the embassy. Of course, nothing happened. There then followed five and perhaps more years of constant attack, because it cannot be called otherwise. In May 1972, the Moscow Embassy story made the headlines thanks to colonists Jack Anderson and Les Whitten. They were immediately confronted with claims of inaccuracy and being alarmist by the military and microwave industry, Raytheon especially. No one, however, contested the hypothesis that the Russians had tried to interfere with the thought patterns and behaviour of the embassy staff, who had never been informed of what had happened. Then, in February 1976, the Los Angeles Times reported that Ambassador Walter Stursel told some of his 125 employees that they were being zapped in the Moscow Embassy and health problems might ensue. In official diplomatic circles, the whole affair was kept under wraps in the interest of détente. The ambassador was reported to have suffered nausea and bleeding of the eyes, with of course no evidence that this was frequency related. The fact that three of Stursel's predecessors, two of whom died of cancer, lodged a complaint with the Russian authorities without informing their staff complicated the whole situation. To the convenience of the State Department, but to the detriment of the personnel, subject to the bombardment of several years, the whole affair was played down by the press, and the real issue of health was sidelined and compensated with a 20% salary increase for Moscow personnel. The valuable lessons that could have been used to discover more about the effects of microwave radiation on humans were lost in the rush to cover up the whole business. But not before it was found that there were systematic breaks in the chromosomes of the personnel who were examined by means of a mouth swab on their return to the USA. The effects of radiation vary from the positively beneficial life to the flip side, death. Every single thing that we can put a name to depends on frequency.
Common microwave radiation symptoms include pain in the head and or eyes, cataract, fatigue, weakness, vertigo, nervous tension, depression, faulty memory, loss of hair, irregular heartbeat, sterility, congenital defects, and so on. Much depends on frequency movement and density. And if it is pulsed at a certain magnitude, the results can be devastating. There is valid speculation that the seven towers taken out on 9-11 were destroyed by that means. So frequency radiation has become indispensable to modern offensive and defensive weapon systems. And pulsed frequency is very popular in energy-directed weaponry, but you will find it hard to access information on that subject. Unlike in the Eastern Bloc countries, no general survey has ever been made in the Western world to explain the effects of frequency radiation. In actual fact, a microwave frequency can penetrate the brain to generate sensation. It impacts the nervous system with the potential knock-on effect to behavior. Chinese doctors have been researching its use for some years now and are turning it to beneficial use in treating all sorts of conditions of ill health. That is not the focus of the rest of the world, it seems, because research has been primarily on the destructive capacity as opposed to its healing ability. A change would be very welcome. By way of example, US researchers in the 1970s achieved not just fetal death, but major birth defects in mice by irradiating pregnant mice with single two to five minute doses of 123 milliwatts per square centimeter. The Russians managed similar results using daily two hour doses 6.5 milliwatts per square centimeter. Your iPhone 6 produces 0.16 milliwatts per square centimeter. But how long do you use it for? If you have enjoyed this content and wish to support Christopher and the team in providing ad free and regular content updates, back us on patreon.com slash Christopher Freeland. You can also find the blog, contact the team, and other authorings at netterenergies.com. Links are in the description of this video. Thank you.